Um, I would argue that Van Gogh, who clearly had documented certain symptoms, in addition to those two symptoms, he also suffered with extreme depression at various times, real mood lability. So sometimes he was intensely depressed, other times he was seemingly more up. Um, and those go together along with something very interesting, which is his paintings. So in his paintings, we see intense color and uh, a difference in terms of paintings that preceded it, which were more realistic. His paintings have this more abstract quality, almost in some ways like a nightmarish quality to them. And that um, makes you think about, again, what was going on in his mind that he produced something like that. If you look at all of those qualities, you think about temporal lobe epilepsy. There is a, a tremendous uh, background and, and about 20 or 30 studies now showing that. A wide variety of different kinds of studies showing a, a particularly elevated rate of mood disorders in highly creative people. There's a symphony of frequencies that we can break apart. And if you look at what's called the power spectrum, look at all the frequencies that we find in artworks, uh, from low frequencies to high frequencies. Here you can see the fuzzy low frequencies of the picture of the Eiffel Tower, the really sharp, high contrast uh, aspects of it. And that shows you that range. So we took all these, and then in the next, uh, in the next photo, uh, what you, the normal thing, if you take a photo of anything in nature, it has what's called a negative one, one over 4A frequency, a spectrum. Now, when we looked at uh, all the artists who were normal, no matter what the paintings look like, some of these paintings look really wild, and, you know, just completely nuts. But, so you can't tell by looking with your eyes at these. But when you look at the, you break down all these components, all the, the normal painters had this, just like nature, like Renoir we looked at, and Monet, and other people, and, and people known to be normal artists. And they had, just like in nature, negative one. However, if you look at people, especially with bipolar, bipolar is the highest correlation with artistic uh, talent. If you look at it, instead of being a, a, a straight line, they, they drop off right at the beginning, low frequencies, then it flattens out and then it drops off again at the higher frequencies. And, uh, and so if you look at that, that was, uh, if you look at Van Gogh or, or Monet, what you see is the underlying pattern of these artists, well-established artists. I am an autistic girl who has learned how to spell and can tell people to stop looking at me like I am helpless. I am cute, funny, and like to have fun. Carly has been very clear that she sees herself as a normal child locked in a body that does things that she has no control over. A year after we first met Carly, she is happier, calmer, more independent. Come on, let's get this in the, pan. In the pan. She's even writing a novel. I think that humankind is just oblivious to things that have been around for many years. She also has her own internet blog and Twitters regularly, answering questions from people all over North America. There are, uh, there are real deficits, but I think there, there are some strengths that someone with a psychosis has. Um, as an example, uh, people with psychosis don't filter stimuli as well as other people do, so more gets in, so to speak, and you notice more. Um, or uh, holding contradictory ideas together in the, in the same space. Uh, looser associations, Freud distinguished between secondary process and primary process, secondary process being logical, means end related, primary process, process being the unconscious, which involves displacement and condensation and contradictories uh, simultaneously existing. Um, and in a way, what happens with psychosis is that primary process uh, invades uh, secondary process and becomes, becomes conscious. And some of the research now is showing that people on the spectrum actually think with primary visual cortex. Now the thing is, the visual thinker is just one kind of mind. You see, the autistic mind tends to be a specialist mind. Good at one thing, bad at something else. And where I was bad was algebra. And I was never allowed to take geometry or trig. Gigantic mistake. I'm finding a lot of kids that need to skip algebra, go right to geometry and trig. Now another kind of mind is the pattern thinker. More abstract. These are your engineers, your computer programmers. Now this is pattern thinking. That praying mantis is made from a single sheet of paper. No scotch tape, no cuts, and there in the background is the pattern for folding it. Here are the types of thinking. Photorealistic visual thinkers like me. Pattern thinkers, music and math minds. 
Some of these oftentimes have problems with reading. You also will see these kind of problems with um, kids that are um, dyslexic. You'll see these different kinds of minds. And then there's a verbal mind. They know every fact about everything. Now, another thing is the sensory issues. I was really concerned about having to wear this gadget on my face. And I, I came in half an hour beforehand so I could have it put on and, and kind of get used to it. And I, they got it bent so it's not hitting my chin. But sensory is an issue. Some kids are bothered by fluorescent lights. Others have problems with sound sensitivity. You know, um, it, it's going to be very... Estimada señora Edison, lamentamos decirle que su hijo ha sido expulsado del colegio. Es un pésimo estudiante y no avanza como el resto de sus compañeros. Por ello, no podemos permitirle que siga estudiando. Será usted quien tendrá que hacerse cargo de él a partir de ahora. She's a choreographer and everybody knows her work. She did Cats and Phantom of the Opera. She's wonderful. I used to be on the board of the Royal Ballet in England as you can see. And uh, anyway, Jill and I had lunch one day. I said, how did you get to be a dancer? And she said it was interesting. When she was at school, she was really hopeless. And the school in the 30s wrote to her parents and said, we think Gillian has a learning disorder. You couldn't concentrate. She was fidgeting. I think now they'd say she had ADHD. Wouldn't you? But this was the 1930s, and ADHD hadn't been invented you know, at this point. So it wasn't an available condition. You know, people... People... People weren't aware they could have that. <laughs> anyway, she sent, went to see this, um, this specialist. So this oak-panelled room, and, and she was there with, uh, with her mother, and she was led and sat on this uh, chair at the end, and she sat on her hands for 20 minutes while this man talked to her mother about all the problems Gillian was having at school. And at the end of it, um, because she was disturbing people, her homework was always late, and so on, a little kid of eight. In the end, uh, the... Uh, the doctor went and sat next to Gillian and said, Gillian, I've listened to all these things that your mother's told me. I need to speak to her privately. So she said, he, he said wait here, we'll be back. We won't be very long. And, and, uh, and they went and left her. But as they went out the room, he turned on the radio that was sitting on his desk. And when they got out the room, he said to her mother, just stand and watch her. And um, the minute they left the room, she said she was on her feet, moving to the music. And they watched for a few minutes, and he turned to her mother, and he said, you know, Mrs. Lynn, Gillian isn't sick. She's a dancer. Today there's a little problem in, uh, in that we have too much, it's not a nice thing to say, but too much medication, which means that the crazy people are controlled in a way and are not as expressive as they used to be before we had all these tranquilizers and what have you. Which is not romanticizing these illnesses. They're really devastating. They're painful. They're scary. They're confusing. Um, and certainly, when you're in the midst of a severe episode, you're not creative, um, yeah. I don't think. And a lot of people fear that if they get treated, if they take medicine, if they go to a doctor, they're going to lose their creativity. But my experience is you're just freer to express it. In.